Welcome, everyone. It's the 10th of May. This is uh, Jenkins Documentation Office Hours. Okay, it's actually the 11th of May for half of the attendees and the 10th of May for the other half. We're doing our Asia and Australia office hours. So I had a couple of items on the agenda that I was, four total that I had, um, wanted to check with others. The ones that were on my list were Jenkins on Kubernetes, um, then Jenkins configuration as code plugin documentation, uh, she code out Africa contribute on retrospective. And then the last one was contributor summit. Those were the four that I had any other top. Oh, and I should probably start sharing my screen just a minute and let's do that. So share, here we go. You should see a document. Uh, no, Kristen today. Okay. We see a document. Great. All right. So first yeah. proposal was Jenkins on Kubernetes, then JCASC, then She Code Africa, and then Contributor Summit. Anything else? Well, that's all. Uh, yeah, you have covered all the items, Mark. All right, great. Then let's let's start with Jenkins on Kubernetes. So the the there were recent comments on the mailing list uh, regarding um, sequence. Sudhakar, do you want to give us an overview of what you're thinking there and how it's how it's going? Anything that we can help with? Uh, yeah, I'm I'm doing good. Uh, basically, uh, I have seen the plugin install manager video by the developer advocate uh, uh, so yeah it it looks similar to some of the products i have worked before so um, basically uh, it looks like the use case that we need to document is uh, is uh, is how easy the plugin install manager makes it to upgrade the plugins and uh, uh, basically, you just uh, say install one plugin and it just installs all the dependencies needed. Uh, whether it, and those dependencies are installed only if they are not present and to the correct release version. So, uh, yeah, it looks straightforward for me and hopefully by next meeting, I should have a uh, uh, ASCII doc out. And uh, um, yeah, I might not have the workspace set up, uh, my GitHub repository. So if I can set it up by next week, then I will put it in my GitHub repository and maybe do a pull request, give it a test drive. But my goal is to finish the GitHub for scrap document by next week. Excellent, thank you. So, so I've, I've, I like that. I think it's good for us to talk use cases. So you mentioned the one of update um, existing plugins to latest. And I think that's, that's a very, that's a crucial one. There are, there are some other use cases that are being used in the Jenkins infrastructure project that in a future time after that initial effort, uh, it would be good to include, let's see, Jenkins configuration as code. Here is, well, let's just go github.com. Yeah, that is updating the Docker file in the Docker image, right? Specifying the properties of the plugin. Yeah, where, where you can use, you can actually use it to Oh, let's see, is it, no, it's not configured. I'm sorry, I did the wrong one. We need plugin installation manager. Yeah. Plugin installation manager. No, that's not it. I just used this technique today, actually, as I needed an output that would tell me exactly the plugin versions that were being asked for and and this this thing has examples in it of let's see the one that I used was where was it 
it was out. Oh, this available updates thing, which allowed me to see which plugins would be would be updated and use a generate the report output so that I could tell how how it should be done. And I, I was really impressed. It's so the updating plugins is there. That's the use case you were describing. Up to yeah, dependency management is easy. Yeah, and then and that that was the one I was dealing with, right? Was dependency management um, as code, where uh, plugins.txt with exact version numbers. Yeah, it, it supports preview option also, I guess. No. Right, right, exactly. Another another use case, right? So preview option, uh, sort of a dry run mode to see, hey, show me what what this would do if I allowed it to do it. Yeah. And it's got a no download mode, a skip failed plugins. So so there are all sorts of of novel things that it can do. Show security warnings that will tell them, hey, if you're using a plugin that's got a security warning. Um, yeah, do you and, mind including the URL in this uh, document? That's the one that you're seeing, please. You bet, absolutely, right there. So. So we've got JCASC, or wait a minute, or no, this is not JCASC, because this is just the regular. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, so so this can be used quite effectively in combination with configuration as code, and yeah. eventually we'll get there. But for right now, the first step was document this one thing, but then Sudhakar's proposal was next was how to build control images, and then how to use configuration as code and JCASC, right? So I think I think it's the the right sequence. It's all right, here's how you manage your plugins. Now, here's how you get those plugins into an image that you can use. And then now here's how you manage the configuration of the image in more things than just plugin versions. And this is different for Kubernetes and for non-Kubernetes? No, no, interestingly enough, it's the same. And so we should be able to reuse up through this piece in in multiple locations because configuration as code works great even for even for a an out of the box installation on linux without using docker so this is what diraj is working on right well no what, what diraj is working on is he's he's preparing things related to configuration as code and he's got a blog post draft that we'll look at later okay cool I'm confused, but it will become clear in time, I'm sure. Okay. Sudhakar, anything else you wanted to wanted to share with us on this? Ready to go on to next topic? Uh, I do not. Yeah, basically. Yeah, I'm I'm searching for uh, Helm Helm charts uh, for various deployment configurations. So, uh, yeah, so, so let's, so let's, let's are, put some, so here are the community helm charts and let's, let's take a look at these. So, whoops, first let's start from the helm charts that are here and they give us some good insights. And then if it helps you, you could also consider, so Helm charts, um, the Jenkins infra project is using Helm charts um, to configure their own Jenkins servers. And so we may be able to find those Jenkins dash infra slash helm. Is that what it is? No. Yeah, I just basically didn't want to duplicate efforts. Uh, so right, exactly. 
Ah, here it is, charts. Okay, but but for me, these are a these are a very promising thing because it gives you a hint of, oh, look, this is how they're doing doing helm charts that are being used right now in production in various ways. So, so the helm charts that the Jenkins infrastructure is using are here. And, and you can see how they're doing it, et cetera. So now, now this is, shows you not just Helm charts for Jenkins, but Helm charts for all sorts of other components that we maintain as part of our Kubernetes cluster. Do we have, do we have a chart here for a yeah, I found a couple of instances, but I wanted to look for the latest. That's all it was. Okay. Let's see, is this? Yeah, okay. So I think, for instance, this one, if we look at Jenkins here, this one is. Yeah. This one is the, the actual server definition that we use to build Jenkins releases. Okay. So, so it's, a, it's a good reference point. Yeah. Uh, Release.ci.jenkins.io is at that location. Okay, thank you. All right. Anything else? Uh, that's all, Mark. Okay, thank you. Thanks very much for your, your willingness. Much, much appreciated. Thank you, thank you. So, Diraj, you had submitted a draft blog post. And sorry, am I being deafening here? Don't mean to be so loud. Yes, so I. Oops, where did I put it? Oh, it's right here. Here we go. Yes. So let me just tell you briefly what this uh, blog post is about. So this blog post is for those users who don't who want to know the YAML configuration of any kind of plugin that they are using. So they can do that. They can find that out by configuring that plugin first on the UI and then using the export configuration or download configuration from the UI and then on the big YAML file that they get when they download the YAML file they have to figure out where that particular uh, YAML snippet is and then you know key that um, this particular plugins YAML configuration looks like this so this is the whole aim of this blog post so I for the demo purposes I've used view job filters plugin and I've uh, tried to be as uh, descriptive as possible and uh, and one question I had was how should the tone of the blog should be like should it be like interactive uh, like should I be referring the readers as you or it should be just like normal textbook blog post that's first thing good good question so i tend to i am i am much less of a writer than meg is so we may want to rely on meg to give us a give us the, the a definitive kind of thing but i tend to prefer avoiding the second person the you i tend to tend to describe it in in terms that are how do you describe it that using third person so do this then do this then do this rather than you do this. Um, but Meg, do you have any guidance there? What's the, what's the best tone for, for a, uh, a blog post? Is it second person, give them instructions? Is it first person, I did this? Is it third person? I, I favor what you're calling, which is actually imperative voice. Third person would ah. be, um, the user should, you know, the user populates this file with this code. I, that's a little rough. I like, but it's imperative. I I like that. Um, 
but a lot of people for a blog do like the informal. I'm kind of a formal writer, so. Sure, understood. So I'll do the changes. So, that makes total sense. Well, and Diraj, you are welcome to do it in whatever tone is comfortable for you. That there is there is no requirement here, certainly, that it needs to be imperative or or a first per second person, whatever form. That's if if it feels comfortable to you, we will happily accept and and rejoice that you're writing. I might argue too that for a blog, the second person saying you should do this and you should do that is more is kind of appropriate for a blog. When you get into the formal documentation, then I like it to be a little more formal. But I'm also I'm not one of those who ever says please do this in my writing. It's like no, just do it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I'm just learning, so I'm I'll be taking all the pointers from you. So I'll work on this for sure. Great. So now in your in your tutorial here, you're taking them through and nice job gathering screenshots. And in this case, it looks like the screenshots are from current code. So big win there as well. You didn't use something out of date. Thank you. Yes. And and what I see looks looks like the kinds of things that I would expect to see. So the the configuration is code file. Uh, shown in the user interface. And now I didn't check the size of your images. Um, what's the what's the screen resolution you're capturing at your, your images at? Oh, actually, it's not a fixed one. I'm just snip. I'm using the snipping tool and just capturing when required, like not a fixed one. Okay, great. So, so you just you 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 grab a snip with the, the the Windows tool or whichever platform you're on and capture it then. Hmm, yes. So, is there a better way to do this? I uh, no no that's that's you just described how I do it. <laughs> great. I've I've fallen in love with this thing called Go Full Page that will take a picture of my of my web page, but. And it's it's free, so you could you could certainly try it, but a, a oh. snip tool, a snipping tool with your operating system is also just great. So you're suggesting to, to capture the snip uh, screenshot of full page, right? Yeah. So this this thing, go full page, has the well. Here, let me open it up. You don't. You certainly don't have to use this. But what I find is when I'm looking at my Jenkins machine, I say, ah, oh, give me a picture of this. It takes the picture and then there it is, I'm done. I have the page or I can now crop in any way I want and still get something out of it. So that, that's, that's the thing that I've liked about it. It's, it's convenient to do and the simple use of it is free. Right, right. Just one small question on that. So if you are capturing the screenshot of full page and uh, whenever I'm at a particular instruction that I want to guide the users that you have to click on this button. So if there's a full page photo, wouldn't user be confused like which one? So yes, you're absolutely right. You have to crop them. I, at least I think I've always felt like I needed to crop them. And sometimes I've even had to crop them and put highlights around the thing I want them to choose because they may not know they've got to click new item, right? That's, it's important, they must click new item or they yeah. must click people or whatever it is, you know, or they click manage Jenkins. And if, if you don't have a way to highlight it to them, mm -hmm. you can be confident they'll miss it. Yes, yeah, so I can do this, like uh, take the screenshot of full page and then highlight like with the help, help of an arrow at which place you want to click next. So would that yeah. look good? that would be fine. Don't be shy about cropping the full page. So if, for instance, we want to highlight that um, we're doing manage Jenkins, it would be perfectly reasonable to say, all right, I'm going to crop this page, come on. And I'm going to crop it to only have those things that are relevant to the user. Right, so your your cropping technique you're using is a really good one. Don't 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 give up on that technique. Yes. 
because now it's now it's much more clear to them. Oh yeah, look, there's only one thing highlighted on the screen. It's this manage Jenkins. I know I need to click there. Okay. Okay, understood. And and I think you had actually done that very well here, right? So for instance, this configuration as code screen has the benefit that you you captured a nice edge on the edges of the of the image so that the user knows, oh yes, I don't have to think beyond that. And it shows the entire thing and the text is readable even for people with poor eyes like mine. <laughs> yes, so yeah. that was my aim, like to be, to be more clear for the user. So just question on this one. So it, the instruction says now click on the download configuration button. So do you want me to put an arrow or highlight that button in the image to make it more clear? I, or it's I'm not I'm not deeply attached to that because this particular image for me seems seems pretty clear. Mm -hmm. and there there isn't a lot of confusion for me on this image. It looks perfectly reasonable when you say click on download configuration. There's only there are only four buttons. Mm -hmm. It's this right. isn't nearly as rich in controls as as the Jenkins main UI is right. If you sh if you have to for some reason show an entire the entire Jenkins page, mm -hmm. then they're going to struggle to find it. But with this, I think it's just great. Right, understood. Meg, anything you would guide there is does that make sense? What I'm describing, or am I explaining what? As I glance at it, because like, I'm not real. From, um, do they is they only type in the path or URL if they want to change from what's the from where the configuration was previously loaded? Or Actually, they... path or URL is entirely optional, and and in this case, not even being used in this in this blog. So, are so do we tell them that? Because I always I see a blank thing. I I don't know how to fill it in or tell me that you use you know if you want to reuse the same location. Ah, ah, that's an interesting point. Okay, so your point there is is okay. I'm going to put a comment here based on that. So, should we should the blog know that the existence of the other fields like path or URL and explain that they're not used in this. Yeah, you don't need, just say you don't, you can leave that blank or something. The other one that I saw, scroll down just a second. I think the next thing is about the view the section. Okay, just a minute. All right, okay. With it. Um, God, nitpicking. Don't you love being copy edited in real time? Um, this is where I would say you can see details related to the view. I have to think a minute about that. I would be inclined to say, go to the view section and make that a black back tick literal. And then I can open the file and search for it and get there right away. So um, is, am I? YAML file. It's, it's to locate the part where you can see. I got it. I, I see that with um, go to the views section, which shows details related to the view or something like that. Oh, yeah, so okay. So it's okay. Yes, so if I understand this correctly, you're suggesting me that it's difficult in this photo to know where the particular YAML uh, uh, configuration of view is. So you want me to highlight it really well. Yeah, is and I think I think it's I think that's a good point. So is there a this may be a place where you really do need to put a box around the views section here because that's the mm -hmm. section that's relevant, right? You've highlighted it to them by putting it in the middle of the screen but it may be best to even this one really draw a box around it because of all the other surrounding text. Hmm, sure, I'll do that. If people don't read anymore, they search. Yes. Okay. One person's opinion, feel free to ignore the multi scribe. <laughs> and, and so as we go forward then, you show them, hey, change the name and set duration. So here, the, here again, there's a place where we probably want to highlight.
duration mm -hmm. and the name and very right. conveniently they're close to each other good choice it's <laughs> like if you put a box around that region they'll see oh here's youtube demo view mm -hmm. and here is build duration minutes sure i'll totally do that great okay oh oh and you did use the path or url okay yes. good nice is this to apply the configuration that you've just uh, changed locally right so what you're doing here is you're showing a feedback loop for the user they can they can prepare the changes themselves uh, mm -hmm. then test them by applying the configuration oh yes did that do what i wanted no here's what i need to do instead then yes so they're downloading the file making some changes locally and then uh, reflecting those changes on their jenkins instance by passing their local files url on this field and then clicking on apply new configuration that's the loop so do you Excellent. want to explain more on this for me this is great because because what you're doing is now you're encouraging them go go see for yourself that it did what you expected and you're teaching them how to do that Yes. So here, maybe I can. Um, I think they they'll be able to notice that name has been changed. That that is written after dashboard, right next to dashboard. And uh, do you want me to highlight fifty value fifty five as well? That that is at the bottom of the screen. See, for me, I think it's already fine even without highlighting it because. Hmm because you've shown they're, they're not going to change this, right? And so for me that you show, look, here's the result. And the result is, here's the correct name, YouTube demo view, and here's mm -hmm. the correct build duration. Right. Right. I, I think I'm, I'm always mis, uh, mistaken to assume that the readers are going to be just like me not that totally there, there are going to be lots of experienced ones as well so that's something i should keep in mind as well well I'll need uh, to guide them that way well i mean it's it's certainly your blog post and you are welcome to do whichever direction you go whichever direction you choose but but i for me i think if you think it will help by all means highlight it if you think if you think oh don't want to do that extra work that's great too right i i think i'd pass on this one i don't want to do it because as you said it's already very clearly visible the name m55 value so that's okay i don't want to overdo it great yeah this this looks really good diraj uh, that thank you very much so now are you comfortable converting this into ascii doc and getting it ready to submit as a pull request Mm, I've never done that, but I will surely do it first by myself. Okay, great. Yeah. So the what you'll find is there are there are instructions on the the contributing page. Let's go there. GitHub in Jenkins.io. There are instructions here on how to how to add, and specifically there is adding a blog post. And this should take you through it. And if you find there's a mistake here or something that doesn't work the way you'd hope, uh, please go ahead and ask questions. Now, there, there is a fun one that I like, this thing called Open Graph, which allows us to embed and associate an image with a blog post so that when we post it on Twitter, uh, it has a picture with it. And so that gives you a chance to, do, do, to create a picture that can be the the sort of highlight of your blog post that picture might be um, this image or it might be one of these images or something else that you think would help people recognize that this is about configuration as code let's see oh, oh actually we've got another owen that, that we could use you could grab some jenkins artwork so about artwork and if we look here, here, see this one right here? 
Yes. If you can find a way to put a reference to this image into your blog post, go ahead and do it because we've already got that image on the site and this is the configuration as code artwork. Oh, okay. Okay. So he, it's just a fun, it's a fun mm -hmm. image to, um, if, if we look at some of the other blog posts, let's see, let's get a, a quick look. Some of the things that we've done in the past. Well, let's see, here's one. Putting the pictures of various contributors into this blog post or putting, let's see, what's a, another one? Evelina Vilcos, here we go. This one has her picture in it. So uh, photos can, can actually help people be interested to read. So go for it. Right, I'll totally do that. Let me, and I should, I should have made a comment on that, that the, let's see, how about if we just put it here? Good to include an open graph image, possibly plus some uh, text. See the social media covers slide deck, for example. And now I'm going to bring up the social media, oops, the social media covers slide deck. What this is, is this is a series of, of uh, Google slides that we use for, for, to generate open graph images. So each of these, if I do file, download PNG, I get something that is very nicely sized to be an open graph image. So you can, you can then use Google slides and I'll, I'll put a link to this into the, mm -hmm. there we go. This would make it more interesting. The blog post. That, that's the hope anyway. I, I, yeah. I am, I am not nearly artistic not enough to actually enough. be good at this, this work, but I think it's helped people by having these pictures, for instance, Jenkinstein. <laughs> and he can do both the, the JCASC Butler and his own picture, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So you bet. Could copy this deck or propose a change in this deck. So, so for instance, if we said, well, let's see, we could, yeah. My technique was, is commonly I'll put some text in there and then embed the image I want to put into the same thing so that now I've got it. Right. I'm curious what you're going to reference for the resource for intro to JCASC. All well, I so I put, I put three different video links here as possible, possible references wasn't sure, and, and this is one, Diraj, where I'd suggest you want to maybe want to watch all three of them and decide which one you think is the best introduction. Mm -hmm. One of them is from uh, Nicolas Deluf and uh, Evelina Vilcos uh, from like 2017. Another one is from, let's see, this one is from, where is it? This one is from like 2018, and this one I think is Oleg and and me and Alex and yeah, this one is, is another one from 2019. So, so look at them and see which one you think is a good one. And hey, you could make a hyperlink there. If you want, you can actually even embed the video itself so that they could click it and play the video. But if I remember right, you were planning on possibly doing a video yourself and yes, this video. It's yes. Oh, it's already there. Okay. I have not viewed that video yet. Okay, good. Yes. So Excellent. initially it was five minutes, but definitely no one would watch it. So I reduced the time and tried my best to keep it two minutes. So if you want me to go less than that, then I can try for that as well. 
Oh, no, no, that's great. So you've, you've got a demonstration here. This should be top center of your, of your blog post. Absolutely. Because ASCII doc has the ability to embed. So insert the video here as a video player frame so that they can click it immediately. It, it gives them, and you may even want to, yeah, that's, that's about right because this much text will only be about halfway into most screens and then they'll see the video and realize, ooh, I can watch a movie. Right, so, definitely. Excellent. Now, and there is a, there is some, let's see, we've got, where is an example of an embedded video? Just a minute, let's find one. I think that, no, maybe I don't have one convenient. I'll have to, I'll have to forward it. Or actually, why don't we just look just a minute. find the right environment. YouTube. And if I remember correctly, yeah, here we go. For instance, in the Introducing Jenkins Minute blog post by Liam Newman. So let's, we'll go find it and that way we can embed it here for your reference. All right, so, oops. I thought that was right, huh? Is Liam going by a different name now? Oh, okay, great. Introducing the Jenkins Minute video series. Here we go. So this one has an example of how you embed a video into right into a, a blog post. And let's see. Yeah, so let's make a note here. See that for the markup that is used to embed a video. Good, very good. Any other any other questions, Diraj? Were there were there any problems you encountered while you were doing the view job filter configuration yourself? Things that surprised you? While uh, configuring it on the UI, I had yes. no problems. Like first, I wanted to understand what the filters do. So for that, I referred the documentation and I the the plugin site of that particular plugin. Then I understood what it is and they showed me with the help of the diagrams what each filter does. So I was able to understand how to go about it. Then, then everything was else was simple. Very good. Excellent. Thank you. Thanks very much. Anything else you'd like, any other questions you'd like to ask or any other guidance that you're seeking? Yes. So now I know what changes I need to do, then I'll do that. And after that, I'll set up the Jenkins uh, environment and then post my doc blog post. And after that, what other doc, uh, blog posts or anything else that we are looking for, that I can write. I'm asking for suggestions from you. Thank you, yes. So so if you're willing to do another 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 on configuration as code, for instance, you could sh highlight some other capability or if you, and configuration as code has many things. So for instance, here you've done a, a, a job filter, you could do another on, on configuring, configuring global settings or 
if, the, if you're open for a particularly challenging one, you could look at how you do credentials in configuration as code. And credentials in, in configuration as code is relatively challenging because you don't want, well, you're trying to, you're trying to handle secrets well. And secrets are, are challenging, at least for me, trying to find the way to manage secrets correctly. Right. So I think that would be interesting. So I'll uh, read about it for sure. Great. Um, is it just me? Is there any interest? The documentation that we have is in the readme for the repo. And it seems to me that it should be pulled into the regular admin, into the admin guide. <laughs> is that just me? Does anybody else feel that way? Oh no, I, th I think I think that's exactly agreed. Sudakar has sees that as well and has outlined it that way. Absolutely, I think though that before we're ready to to do that step, we need to be sure that we got people who are confident using it. So I wanted to be sure that Diraj has a has enough experience before starting to do that kind of a transformation. Likewise for Sudakar, if we need to be sure they're comfortable using it before they start transforming the documentation into okay. the into the site. Yeah, I agree. So, if I'm not wrong, uh, it we were talking about uh, converting this blog post into the main Jenkins admin site, right? Maybe I would phrase it a little differently. It was that I think what Meg was suggesting is that we really need, we need, and, and Sudhakar has it here actually in, let's see, where is our, I'm off. I must have lost my, ah, yes, here it is. So use of the JCASC plugin needs to go into the Jenkins documentation itself. Right now, in, if you want to use configuration as code, you have to find a video that will guide you and then read the documentation that's inside the plugin itself. All right, you have to go to, go to the configuration as code page. And what Meg's point was is that we really need official documentation that lives outside of the configuration as code plugin repository. Oh, you silly thing, Jenkins CI. Like that. So today, if I wanna know how to use it, I read the readme and all right, that's great, but this is so central to Kubernetes use, to use with, with the Debian package, with the RPM package, with the Windows installer, it can help in all those cases. So we should really describe it on Jenkins.io, not just in the plugin documentation. Okay, makes sense. Like, I don't know, my approach, you can slap me. Um, I would take what is in the readme file and just take it as is and turn it into a chapter in Jenkins.io and then we could expand on it. But it's, I mean, it's, de it's decently written. It's got some good information. And, yeah. you know, just my approach is then for something like the credentials and the secrets that, that does get nasty to have the basic information written up here and then a link to the video and the blog could be nice. Mm. But it's just a, it's a question of approach, I suppose. Good. Yeah, so secrets management. Yeah, there it is. So, okay. Yeah, and that that's, I think Meg's got a good, a good idea. The, the notion that, okay, should we just take this material and transform it onto the Jenkins.io page so Meg, let's let's take a minute and just look. So when I look at here, for example, so we've got managing Jenkins, 
Let's see, do we already have a thing for configuration as code? I don't. I should look. So. But we have configuring this system, and I'd shove this in right after that, I think. Do you seek? So here? Oh, right. Here is, I right see there. what you're saying. Yeah, got it. So this this makes actually this might be a great place for it is right on this page right configuring the system page would be a in fact that is that where we had suggested it sudakar when we were discussing with in your outline yeah yeah configuration as code we we have already have an action item on that right so we've got a location for it yeah and this configuring the system seems to make sense so we don't have anything to be said about configuring the system without jcask yes no no there's there's also plenty to be said there but it feels like jcask could easily be a, a dominant portion of this page yeah that describe configuration as code as a general concept and then introduce jenkins features uh in uh, regular uh, classic context and in kubernetes context so these are the items. The way I looked at it is, I looked at, okay, uh, we are going to do Kubernetes solutions page, right? And then I, I listed my top level activities and then I tried to go through the documentation and see what is there and what is missing. And then I came up with my list. So one of the things that was missing was configuration as code. Uh, topic. Mm. Yeah, and I think this is the right place to put that. Yeah. And and certainly there will be other other things in this same page, but we've got we've got multi-topic pages in many places, right? So for example, let's pick, let's see what's a good one. Managing users may have no. How about managing nodes? No. It's, this section is woefully incomplete. Here we go. Themes for the user interface uh, has multiple sections. And so I think configuring the system, one of its sections underneath this page could easily be configuration as code. Yeah, I could even consider embedding the videos into these, in, into one or more of the locations here so that users could click in the video and watch the video and right in it. Yeah. So, so Diraj, back to you, this is a place where, if I understand correctly, Sudhakar, you're going to be, you'll probably be a little while before you would get to this spot. So if Diraj wanted to explore this and try copying content in, we could look at that as a possible thing. We could, we could see, have him held. Would you be okay with that, Sudhakar, or would you rather keep this one solo? Uh, that's fine if, if Diraj wants to do it, but uh, yeah, I want to give it. Uh... Okay, uh, the approach I had was describe the concept mm -hmm. and then go through how to use it. Right, and, uh, and I uh, think that's, oh, go ahead. Yeah, and that is the approach I am, I am planning to take for pretty much whatever I'm planning on doing. Mm. See, because uh, uh, when I looked at some, uh, I, I feel better if a document explains a little bit the concept and then goes how to use it. Uh, uh, it's easier to understand uh, than completely being a task oriented document. Mm. I want to try and see how it comes out in this uh, context of documentation. Uh, so on Kubernetes solution page, it's easier to do concept and task oriented uh, format. But if I get into the manual specifically, most of it is task oriented. So I am thinking how to fit the concept also there. 
like for example mm-hmm. in the kubernetes page in managing jenkins section right i pl- and to introduce concepts the relevant concepts uh, more briefly and succinctly than opposed to uh, a big paragraph of text which i find it difficult to focus mm-hmm. so that's what i am trying to do if well if, and siraj uh, wants to do it uh, well certainly the the kubernetes the kubernetes topics are very both broad and deep right so yeah. so they are that's an ideal place for your your technique of describing concepts certainly that makes sense absolutely yeah so for configuration of code the if yeah that's what i had in mind so uh, to it is easier to be consistent if i do the whole thing but right yeah that's the only issue i have for the only yeah and i th- i think you've got a good that i have to do with mm-hmm. my job that that's a good point with a with with if you do the entire jenkins on kubernetes we will get more consistency than if we have multiple people attempting to do it that i think that makes sense so that may lobby that rather than putting diraj into this section let's have him look at others for now and see how how your progress goes yeah my progress should be pretty quick once i get started uh, on uh, putting things to paper okay rather putting things to screen yeah all right so diraj you you had asked earlier what's next right and so if we if we had you look at configuration as code in other use cases and maybe what we have you do is blog those just like you blog this one if you were to blog uh, hey here's how i use secrets with with it that gives a way for your your contribution to be visible quickly and and get you experience with configuration as code and highlight you to others would you be willing to do a second blog post on configuration as code i think there are many different topics on on configuration as code that could fit into a into a series of blog posts i would actually love to do that because it would encourage me to learn more on it and then documenting it for others that would be really great as well great that, and i i think that would be i think that would be helpful for users and helpful for many others who could benefit by oh look here's how here's how diraj solved this thing here's how we did this thing and and that kind of experience is is a great experience thank you very much for being willing thank you so much so if you get time can you just watch the video when you are free and tell me if there's something which is unclear and is there any problem with accent or anything that i i'm happy to redo it i will do so particularly given that you've made it such a compact video i should have you feedback in 15 minutes or less great thank you so much all right thank you we have almost run out of our time are there any other things i would propose we call the last two topics that are on the list for another time not worry about them today i've i'm approaching time when i need to go to bed yeah i guess that's important i assume it's what 8:30 a.m. for you in in bengaluru yes yes sir yes excellent good so sorry we get you up so early in the morning but thank you very much for your, for be, being part of this this is this is a real treat we so appreciate your willingness to help thank you to both of you thank you thank you for we and could we ask how you guys are our news stories make it look like things are really bad in india are you guys safe yes yeah. we are safe we are safe but things are really bad